This is Vern Benham Grimsley with the Spiritual Renaissance Broadcast. Recently, Clareton, Pennsylvania, spent $50,000 on the finest aerial ladder fire truck in western Pennsylvania. But then when a fire broke out, it was discovered that the truck was too long to get around the corner. Subsequent investigation, in fact, found that there were 56 corners in town which this truck could not get around. It is of little consequence how magnificent your fire truck is if you can't get it to the fire. And it doesn't matter how beautiful your religion, your philosophy, architecture, ritual, and liturgy are, if they do not touch and transform human lives. The test of truth is practical in religion. It is the fruit which it bears. By their fruits you will know them, said Jesus. A fig tree will not bear thistles. The philosopher Peter Forsyth has written, Unless there is within us that which is above us, we shall soon yield to that which is about us. Man must be arched and buttressed from within, wrote Marcus Aurelius, the philosopher, else the temple wavers to the dust. And Dr. David Seabury, the famous clinical psychologist, said of the many mental cases he had treated, I have never been able to bring a man back to sanity and right thinking until I had first brought him back to faith in God. There's one occasion in which you read that Jesus had his disciples get aboard a boat and go on ahead to Bethsaida on the other side of the lake while he himself sent the crowds home and when he had sent them on their way, he went off to the mountainside to pray. Jesus well knew the secret of spiritual strength, which is in the inner life, private prayer and meditation and worship, sharing your inner life with the God who loves you, who is your father and your friend. Consider that an ordinary white oak tree during its growing season, according to botanical scientists, consumes 15 gallons of water each and every day. A growing tree is a thirsty tree, and a spiritually growing person is a spiritually thirsty person as well. Learn to draw from these deep wells of the Spirit by prayer and by worship, by practicing the presence of God. On one occasion, Jesus said, Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, and he that seeks finds. And to him that knocks, it shall be opened. Or what man is there of you, whom if his son asked bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will give him a serpent? If you then know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more shall your Father which is in heaven give good things to them that ask him? There are three words in that teaching of Jesus, which can entirely transform your life and your philosophy and your thinking. They are these, how much more, because those three words are the keys to understanding the ways of God. Jesus tells how an earthly father loves his children, and then he says, how much more does your heavenly father love you? Think how an earthly father forgives and does good to his son or daughter. How much more will God forgive and do good to you? Think how beautiful is the most beautiful music or artwork or the most beautiful sunset you have ever known on earth. Then think how much more beautiful is the beauty of God. Think how exciting is the most exciting truth which you have ever known. How much more alive with truth is God. Think how good is the best person, the best human being you have ever met or known on earth. How much more good is the goodness of the living God, whom you can know experientially. Religion in every age proclaims spiritual truth to assist men and women in dealing with the difficulties of life. Primitive man needed liberation from bondage to tradition. He needed to recognize one supreme God of nature and the spiritual world. And he needed the assurance that faith alone is required in order to receive the gift of eternal life. That original gospel of faith in the one living God is always relevant. And Jesus came expanding that truth. The people of his day needed especially to grasp the personal character of God's relationship with the individual. Jesus revealed the personality of the Father and taught that all people are the sons and daughters of God, that the kingdom of God is within, that doing the Father's will is the fulfillment of all of human life. Today, humankind needs a new experience of these spiritual truths, fresh insight into the fatherhood of God and the brotherhood of man, insight to harmonize scientific facts, philosophic meanings, and spiritual values, a rebirth of genuine religion, a spiritual renaissance can and will transform the junkyards of secularism into gardens of a planet blossoming in faith, a faith which you can know 
a faith in a God whom you can know. Someone says, well, I'm not going to commit my life to God by this sort of faith until I first intellectually understand all about religion. That's like standing at the edge of a swimming pool and saying, you're not going to get me into that water until I learn how to swim first. But the truth of the matter is that you learn how to swim precisely by getting into the water. You learn to understand religion in the same way, by plunging into it, by daring to live by faith, beginning this moment. It can begin for you in this instant. We think we're so modern, so advanced, so cultured, a South Sea Islander with a ring in her nose is a savage, but a New Yorker with a pearl screwed in her ear is civilized. The story is told that before the Pan-American Highway through Mexico was built, President Cardenas went to the Indians and told them that they would have a road, a splendid highway through the mountains. They thought that was fine, but after the highway came, the Indians went to Cardenas and said, we don't mind the road, but can't you do something about those awful cars that keep going over it? in an age of fastness and frenzy. Humankind need to take time for the inner life, to think and pray, to meditate and worship, to share your inner life with God. There was an old farmer back in Kansas, my home state. On his 90th birthday, they asked him how he had lived so long, and he said, when I work, I work easy. When I sit, I sit loose. And when I worry, I sleep. Jesus said, be not anxious. And if you're secure in the living love of the living God, you will not be fearful and filled with anxiety, but the pace of modern life is far too fast. I like the attitude of the old Ozark mountaineer who was sitting out on his front porch when a neighbor came by and asked him what time it was. He looked down at the shadow on the floor of the porch and said about four and a half planks till supper time. Take time every day to slow down. Take time every day to think and pray and find the deeper things of life, the deeper things of God, whose spirit indwells your mind. Know you not that you are the temple of God and the spirit of God dwells within you, wrote Paul. Air, the physical air you breathe is everywhere. It is free. But unless a person will breathe that air in, he might as well be on a planet with no air at all. It's there, but you must draw upon it. Suppose a young boy is pulled unconscious from a swimming pool, and the lifeguard is giving him artificial respiration. And there's a crowd gathering around, and somebody says, what's the problem? The lifeguard says, he can't breathe. And someone says, isn't there enough air? Yes, says the lifeguard, there's plenty of air. There are miles and miles and miles of air in all directions from here. But unless I can make him draw upon that air into his lungs, says the lifeguard, he will die. And so with the infinite living love of God, there is plenty of love in this universe for everyone, freely available everywhere. But what I am challenging and calling upon you to do is to draw upon that love. Draw upon what is there for you. Accept this love of God. Open up and take it. Have the faith to claim it for your own. I remember reading in a history book one time that when the engineers were building the great suspension bridge across the Niagara River, first a thin thread was attached to a kite and sent over on a favoring wind. By means of that thread, a heavier string was then pulled across, then a rope with a steel cable tied to it, and then from that, the mighty bridge itself was erected across the raging waters. Believing is something like that. You may feel that you have but the thinnest thread of faith to fasten to the spiritual dimension of life, but it will grow stronger and become greater faith and greater and greater until your assurance of eternal things is utterly unshakable. But it begins, as Jesus said, as a grain of mustard seed in such a tiny fashion. But have faith. God has a will for your life, and God has an eternal will for your eternal life beyond your death. Dr. W. B. Henderson of Portland, Oregon, died some years ago. He was a great preacher. But a short time before his death, his doctor told him that he was in the grip of an unyielding case of cancer. When he went before his congregation, he acquainted them with the doctor's verdict on his health. And then he added these words, and I quote him, I walked out where I live, five miles out of this city, 
and I looked at the river in which I rejoice. And I looked at the stately trees that are always God's own poetry to my soul. And then in the evening I looked up to the great sky where God was lighting his lamps, and I said, I may not see you many times more, but mountain, I shall be alive when you are gone. And river, I shall be alive when you cease running to the sea. And stars, I shall be alive when you have fallen from your sockets, said Dr. Hinson. What a beautiful affirmation of faith in God. And that faith may be yours as well. For if you give your life to God, you are going to live forever. May you give your life to God this moment. And then write to us at the Spiritual Renaissance Institute, Post Office Box 3080, Oakhurst, California, 93644 USA. That's the Spiritual Renaissance Institute, or abbreviate it, SRI, Post Office Box 3080, Oakhurst, California, 93644 USA. I've written Finding God, Getting to Know God, Growing Spiritually, Seven Principles of Prayer, all this literature, yours with no cost, charge, or obligation. For those of you listening in other countries around the world, over our international satellite and shortwave network, let me spell the mailing address, Post Office Box 3080, Oakhurst, O-A-K-H-U-R-S-T, California, C-A-L-I-F-O-R-N-I-A, 93644, USA. This is a non-sectarian, non-profit program proclaiming the dawning spiritual renaissance, the fatherhood of God and the brotherhood of man, the worldwide family of God. And so for now, this is Vern Benham Grimsley saying, may God's will be done by you. Good day.